Hey guys, Eric here from worshipbanduniversity.com, and today we're going to take a look at how to import cues, loops, and MP3s into our Ableton Live session to create a song in our set list. The first thing you need to do is somewhere on your computer, make a file and name it Ableton Tracks, then drag in all the Ableton Tracks that you have, whether you downloaded them from places like loopcommunity.com or whether you made them yourselves, and put them all in one spot so it's easy to find. I'm then going to go over here to my left and click Add Folder. Then this window will pop up. Now on my desktop, which is where I save most of my stuff, I have my Ableton Tracks. So I'm going to click on that and open. What that's going to do is bring it in the side window over here. So once I click on that, in that folder, all my songs are located there so I can find them really super easy so I can make a set list. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a song in our set list uh, named Alive by Hillsong. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click this little down arrow over here. And here are all the files that are located in that folder. I'm going to drag in my cues into my cue column, my track into my loop column, and my mp3 into the mp3 column. What I'm then going to do over here is go to the master set list over here and rename that just like we would a click only track. I'm basically going to put the name of the song alive, semicolon space, 132 space BPM, semicolon space, then 44 which is the time signature, and hit enter. Now the reason I knew the time signature uh, was because I know what the time signature of the song is, but also the tempo of the song, I knew that really fast because in the actual song name, there's 132. Anytime you download a song from loopcommunity.com, it will always be in the song name, so that makes it really easy. Or also, too, when you make them, I would put that right in there, too, so you can find it right away. The next thing we need to do is warp the loop track as well as the cue track. Now what this does is it makes kind of everything sync together with Ableton. I'm not going to go into all the crazy stuff, but basically you need to do this so that you can change keys, change tempos, and to make sure everything works together the correct way. So I clicked over here on the loop. I'm going to hold shift and also highlight my cues. I'm then going to go to the top left to the master metronome over here, and I'm going to drag this up to 132 beats per minute. I'm then going to go down here to the bottom and click warp. Once that turns yellow, that just basically synced these up with the Ableton metronome. So now if I just go ahead and click on the loop over here, I can see down here that is set to 132. And if I click over here, that is also set to 132. So now if I play this track, the click, the cues, and the loop should all be synced up together. So let's see if it worked. One, two, intro, two, three, four. Two, three, four. So we can see that everything is working perfectly. One other thing that you can do, which you don't really have to, but it helps things to be a little more organized, is I'm going to click, then right click on the name, and I'm going to change it to a color. I'm going to use this cool little orange over here. I'm then going to highlight all the other tracks that are in this particular song and make them the same color. Again, you don't really need to do this. It just makes things a little more streamlined and organized, especially if I start adding 10 songs onto here. It just makes all the files really easy to see and easily just be able to access them. So try this out. Make a bunch of other songs in there. Make a cool set list and run through them and see how that works for you. We'll see you guys in the next video.